We're going to go check in on the nets that I set yesterday. Well, the goal is just to see how much per net after one night there is. If there's nothing, then I'm not even going to bother lifting the rest of them. I'll just leave them and let them soak for a little longer. It's kind of a, you know, race to finish, I guess. The next morning, Trevor is eager to see if his nets are in the right spot. After less than 24 hours, he's hoping for a sign there's fish in the area. He's letting me know it's this spot's kind of volatile. You never know what you're going to get, but I am hoping that I'm going to get some fish and I can come in and show him. You know, that'll show him. Yeah, there we go. Hard to tell. Doesn't feel like a ton right now, but we'll see. Oh, it feels a little heavier now. It's the moment of truth. With only time for one lift remaining, Trevor needs a sign there are whitefish and pickerel in the area. Uh-oh. I don't think this net's in great shape either. Is this one your dad gave you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't complain. Hey! Oh. Uh-oh. That's not looking great. No. Maybe I missed it. You never know. I will have to try a couple more nets just to get a better idea. If this net wasn't such a freaking rag, maybe it would catch fish. <laughs> there, that's it. Not looking very good. Couple fish. With the first net of disappointment, Trevor is hoping the next one is on the fish. Well, this isn't looking too good. Nope, not at all. There, no fish. Frustrated, Trevor lifts one more net that will give him insight into how these nets will do. Hey! A little sign of fish. I'm cautiously optimistic. It's funny, these are the size nets my dad told me not to set. They're gonna probably be the only good ones. Whatever. It's cold, it's been a long season, I'm tired. and I've already pulled up and now I'm back on the lake. I never thought that was gonna happen. The long winter season is taking a toll on Trevor. He decides to leave the nets in for the next seven days, although now he's not expecting much out of them. It's officially the last day of the winter fishing season. All crews must have their nets out of the water before the sun sets. Leaving them any longer under the ice would be illegal. Richard and Mike venture out one last time to retrieve a net they left behind. But on the way out, Mother Nature has a surprise in store for the father-son crew. The place where they usually cross the pressure ridge is pushed up, creating a barrier between them and their last net. Better over there. Better over there. There, it's all slush over there, too. Where? Over here. Okay, maybe go Looks over here. better over there. Yeah. It's opened up. She pushed and opened at the same time. Here, she's opened too much. It's <laughs> open about four Nothing feet. There. The crack has opened up, leaving a four-foot gap of dangerous water. They search for another spot to cross. It's good here. Oh, okay. Little deep here. Just the one spot or what? Uh, right here, there's nothing here. There's a big hole here. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Wouldn't it better just keep going? It's pushed all along. Shelf ice, but kind of seems soft. Once it opens up at places there, you think it's fine, but it could be some snow there. You got to check it clear thoroughly, and still, it's pretty dangerous. I get a little bit sketchy with going past the crack now, since it went down twice. At first, when I went through it, it was just a shock of it. It didn't really affect me at all. I didn't find it was that cold. But then, once I struggled to get out, panic started setting in, and then I could really feel the cold. Having gone through the ice twice in his lifetime, it is not an experience Mike wants to repeat. Jesus Christ. Wonder where Ken and them crossed, or? Oh, well, there they are now. The crack is an issue, but they must find a way to cross in order to remove their last uh, net. Well, there's a few guys going there. I guess we'll go over we'll there. We'll go over where the other guys are. Richard and Mike arrive as other crews create an ice bridge. Perfect, perfect. OK. It's finally time to try a crossing. Mike crosses on a snowmobile first to check the ice. Meanwhile, Richard positions the bombardier, but he's having issues. Jesus Christ! Pretty dicey there. Don't want to go off the path. Lining it up perfectly is key to not going through the ice and ending up at the bottom of the lake. Today, 
Today's the last day for sure. Crack's getting a little too crazy. I thought the year's a big one, I guess. Yeah. This time, they have come prepared and brought the longer hook to reach their net. Okay. Pretty light. Oh, yeah, that, well, that's good. Mike hooks the line on his first try. It's frozen, I guess. Okay. But there's an issue. The net is stuck. I figured it's getting caught there. Uh, you can check on the other. Maybe it didn't go down. Mike checks to see if the other end of the net is caught on something. I try to pull from here. <laughs> okay. But it may be frozen into the ice. This is a worst case scenario for the Bjarnesons. What the hell? No. Can't pull much there. No. How much can you pull? Not much. Today. Looks bad. Oh, it's all butted on the other side, too. A few kilometers north, Gene and Candace Pischke are also stuck behind the pressure ridge, unable to reach their nets on the last day of the season. This is awful, hey? Eh? Another crew is there as well, and they work together to chip down the ice and form an ice bridge. You gotta smash it down. It's the only way you can get across. Well, that looks better. That don't that look looks too bad. Good. Just crawl slow. The only way you can make a crossing is get out there and work at it. My friend Steve's gonna drive over with the snowmobile and it'll pack it down and yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, it looks good. Just gotta go it's slow. Good. With more than six times the weight of a snowmobile, the bombardier is much more likely to crash through the rotten ice. My good wife Candace will walk across. And uh, and then I only gotta worry about me, right? If I'm in the bombardier if it goes in. You don't need me positioned here? No, no, okay. you're good. I'll pick you up on the other side, baby. Okay. <laughs> Ease the old girl up and get over, and then you just use a little bit of power and drop her down as gentle as you can. It's Gene's turn to cross the crack. His plan is to take it slow, hoping the ice doesn't give way on either side. I'm anxious. It's kind of half excited and half nervous. The entire Christensen crew loads up to head out to the Narrows. Today, they will see if they place their nets in the right spot. Hurry up, old man. Convoy's ready to move out. Sad day in Mudville. It's a big job, and so today, Trevor joins Chris to lift and remove nets on the last day. We're ready. I think everyone's looking at each other. They're wondering what to do, so it's time to load them up and head them out. Canito, the final fantasy. We're done. It's been 135 days. It's time. Let's get it done, get back in. Try not to break anything. The Christensen's are helping out a sick fisherman fill his quota. They are counting on a good haul of fish today to finish it off and help save their friend's business. Yeah, we have to knock it down. Okay, I'd rather go here and there and throw it in that slush. The guys form an ice bridge to drive the bombardiers across. Right where you're standing. This is the place to go. Over here, Riley Moore. I came here yesterday and the bombardier went boom, boom. And where Trevor is there. Yeah, I came hey, across Pete. here yesterday and it's, there's a big buildup of ice here, so the bombardier came sideways like this and then sideways again on this side. This is a bad place to cross, but it's still the best place we can cross. On the way back, I gotta bring the caboose back, so what I, I don't want humps. I'll go across this for now. Okay. Trevor takes the lead on the difficult crossing. Get out of the way! Okay, here goes. Finally, it's Chris's turn. It's supposed to be plus 10 today. Plus 10 is not winter fishing weather. Plus 10 is get the f off the ice weather. Once everything's on shore with all of us, I'll feel a lot better. Here it goes. Plus 10 is get the f off the ice weather. Here goes. Hey! It's the final day of the winter fishing season, and Chris Christensen just crossed the pressure ridge for the second last time. Once I get that caboose past that last ridge, I'm happy as hell. We got half a dozen each here, I think. 
Trevor will do some, I'll do some. We'll probably meet up together and travel together. This time of year, you want to have toe straps and bombardiers. Anything can happen. Well, we're each going to try and do six, so if I can do that, that'll be pretty quick for us. There's some younger nets, so me and Riley should be able to handle. We haven't even started yet, and I'm already, like, pouring sweat. It's so hot out. OK, we got work to do. I got to quit screwing around. The two crews separate in order to speed up the process. Near Gimli Harbor, Gene and Candace breathe a sigh of relief as they make it across the pressure ridge. Crack was a bit of a problem today. That, that just figures, our last day, <laughs> and it decides to totally erupt. Oh, well. Welcome to my life. Yeah. With the dangerous crossing behind them, it's time to get down to fishing. But will there be enough fish to make their quota? Looks all right, eh? Lifting outside for the last part of the season. I didn't want to have to take that caboose over, eh? No, that would be bad, trying to get it over that. Wreck something. Yeah. So far, the fishing is good, but will their nets continue to produce? It looks like the fish is fresh, and we're going to be close. With the limit, we're going to be close. The last day, it is what it is. It's in the nets now. But as we're out here, I'm still thinking about the crack there, the pressure ridge. Crossing back over the crack weighs heavy on Gene. It's all about lifting nets fast before the weather gets too warm. That's a good pull of fish. Yeah, nice. Can't pull much there? No. OK. We'll try to pull her here with a bomber. Meanwhile, Richard and Mike are trying to save a net that has frozen into the ice. They don't want to lose a net full of fish and risk being fined for having nets in the water past the last day of the fishing season. Yeah, pull her as tight as possible. Yeah. Richard's plan is to use brute force okay. to get the net out, hooking it up to the bombardier and ripping it out of the ice. Oh, jeez. The cork line snapped. The guys try a second attempt, pulling with the bombardier. More! More! I don't know if she'll come free, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, Jesus Christ! She won't get past that spot here. Jay. Keep snapping. Try the other end or what? Uh, if we can get the other end. I couldn't get it. No, but uh, I need the line. Yeah, I know. I got the lines up. OK. The guys try lifting the net from the opposite end. It may be the place where it is frozen into the ice. Probably snap right away, wouldn't it? That's as best as I can get. Oh, God. Oh, God. Richard and Mike are attempting to free a net that is frozen into the ice. Oh, she froze. It's froze right here. The lead line's good. This is it right here. Yeah, I can't get it. Oh, there. A little bit. Hold on. We'll cut her over here. Cut it right there? Yeah. I think we can salvage it. Jeez. Oh, I'm just glad to be almost done. Trevor and Riley have split from Chris's crew so everyone can finish the day sooner. Luckily, the catch is looking good with their friend's quota in sight. Oh. Beautiful. But the temperature has risen to 11 degrees Celsius, making it harder on the equipment and more dangerous for the fishermen. We just went through their old hole, actually, which is what I probably should have done in the first place, but now you know it's getting warm. With their lifting caboose, they have to auger on the opposite side of us. I guess I'm used to doing it the old school way. These nets are too good. We can't pull it up. Oh, wait, we have to. Wow, these are killer nets. Meanwhile, only a mile away, Chris and his crew are ready to lift their final nets of the year. They hope they are heavy with fish as well. We got three here, three over there. And they can get the rest. Sounds good. Do you want to tie two together or no? We can. But let's tie two together. Sure. Chris decides to lift two nets at the same time, speeding up the lifting process. He wants to get the equipment off the ice completely, including his large lifting caboose, before the temperatures get any warmer. We tie the two together because we're not pulling them back under. We can just pull two up at once inside the caboose, so it's a little faster. Pull way faster than Trevor. Not because we have more guys. 
Hey, how's it going here? There's this great big lake, and it's filled with fish. We don't know what to do. The fishing is excellent, and the caboose makes fast work of lifting nets, a hopeful sign it'll make the sick fishermen's quota for the year. The best thing about this winter now ending is we'll all have a time to refocus and think about where we're going to go next season. I'm going to embrace change from here on. But then Chris spots trouble. You gotta tighten the track on the other side. He discovers a loose bombardier track. If the bomber gets stuck on the ice today, there's a good chance they may not get it off at all. Retrieving a three-ton bomber from the bottom of the lake could cost him thousands of dollars. See here, look, it's banging right through. 